What makes InDesign different and how can it help you? In today's video, I'll be answering all of that plus show you how to use InDesign to create impressive presentation boards so that you can feel confident using the software. Watch till the end of the video for my thesis presentation boards as well as free templates. I will be using InDesign CC 2019 for this video. So let's start and open a new document. I have my A2 preset already saved, but if you don't have anything saved, then you can go into print and choose a paper size. But let's go to recent and I'm gonna pick A2 which is 420 by 594 and I'm just gonna leave it as 10 pages for now and I'm going to select horizontal. For margins I like really thick margins because I feel like it helps with the simplistic view so 20 millimeters is good for me. For bleed and slug, you don't have to worry about slug, you most probably won't use slug. My presentation boards were only for online view, they weren't printed. So if you are printing your presentation boards, add an appropriate bleed. So now let's hit create and start our presentation boards. So I like using grids in my presentation boards because it's just easy to use. So I'm going to use a shortcut F or use rectangle frame tool to create rectangles, which will represent where I put kind of my images. So a rough layout could be like a big image here and then a site section here, maybe a few smaller images here. Take this into more detail and then start making a bit more accurate boxes into the layout that you want. Since this is a site analysis, I always love sections at the bottom of the page because that black line, it gives strength to the board. And as you can see, it is a grid, but I've tried to make it a bit more interesting with moving things and offlining them. I'm going to make a box between one space that I like and I'm going to do that across all of the pages so that the space between the images is consistent. As long as this spacing is used throughout the boards, it will look amazing. So now let's type a title. For these boards, I loved using Times New Roman for titles in bold and then Arial regular for body text. So I'm going to create another text box for the paragraph. And if I right click, I can place fill with placeholder text, which is really good if you're just preparing your presentation boards and you don't really know what you want to say just yet. And I like my text to be justified, so I'm going to justify that. But the problem with that is some letters end up being hyphenate but what you can do is actually turn off hyphenate if you click on these three buttons here and then uncheck hyphenate it's automatically fixed for you you can just create a new text box i don't know why i copied and dragged it but you can just create a new text box for titles and these i'm gonna have them as centered I like using text boxes in the beginning of the presentation boards even if I don't know what I'm gonna say but it also helps with the composition and I'll have a video linked in the cards for you about how to use fonts and text in your presentation boards because it really does make a difference where you place the text. Adding images to InDesign is literally the easiest thing ever. You can just drag your Photoshop file and then drag it where your box is and it will automatically fit it for you. One thing to know about InDesign is that the blue line means the boundary of the image, but the red affects the image. So as you can see, I'm just dragging the images and once it's red, I can then move the image right and left, but the frame still stays as it is, which is a huge advantage for InDesign over Photoshop. Because this is a site section and you want to make sure that it is to scale, you can then drag and click once on an empty area and once you click once it will place the image in its original size. I know that this is now to scale. I'm just going to put it in place and then crop it and then use the orange boundary to move it and adjust. Another way to add images in design is for example you click from one corner of where you want to place the image and then drag and hold to the other corner and again it will fill it for you. Another cool way to add images in design is that you can add multiple images at the same time using the same technique. If I select these three Photoshop files and I add them to InDesign, as you can see, it will show you a preview of which image it is so that you can place it in the appropriate box. For titles and consistency, I always have to have the titles in the same place in every presentation board. 
So you can just copy that and copy that in place into all of the other presentation boards. You can also use master pages, but that's kind of an advanced topic for now. And I don't really use it for presentation boards since it's only a few documents. This is another layout that I love doing in my presentation board, which is such a simple layout. It's a large image and then smaller images and text boxes on the left. So this could be anything, but I love having any site plans, any ground floor plans. When you want to show a bit more context, detail into the landscape, I really want to show it off. So this is the best layout to do so. I'm going to add my master plan right now. This presentation board will fit 1 to 1000 master plan, but I don't create my master plan in 1 to 1000. I will create it in 1 to 500 and then scale that down to 1 to 1000 because that keeps the quality in your file and the detail. So the best thing about InDesign is that you can scale things as well. If you go to here where the height is or the width, you can choose whichever one you want. If you type the backslash on your keyboard and then the number, so for example, I'm scaling it down by a half because it's from 1 to 500 to 1 to 1000, so I'm going to scale that down by a half. Then I can put it back in place and I'm sure that it is to scale and it's high quality. Then you can add multiple images explaining your master plan. And the best thing about creating these horizontal boards is that you get to focus on one aspect of your design at a time. So the first was about site analysis. This board is about master planning. I really suggest you try out this technique of creating horizontal boards only on one topic. So now the third layout that I want to show you is a very simple layout because it focuses on the negative space. This board will be about the hotel rooms and its interior spaces. Do it pretty randomly and add them to the bottom of the board. Rearrange them so that, for example, the living space is the first image. Make sure they're all aligned. If you remember the other box that I've used, I'm going to use it again to make sure that the space in between all of these images are the same. So I'm going to add some text boxes. Now I'm going to add the plans for these hotel rooms. So I'm going to click once and that way I'm sure it is to scale. And then I'm going to scale that down by a half. I'm going to crop each plan separately so then I can control its spacing. And I'm going to crop it right to the edges of the image. And another benefit of InDesign is, for example, if you hold down Alt and you copy and drag, then you can control the image and choose the other plan, but still the image is the same size. And since these plans are different in size, it creates this negative space that's quite dynamic, which I really like. To make sure that the spacing is equal, what you could also do is select all of the images together. And then if you go to align, you can also distribute spacing. Shortcut W will switch between the normal to preview, which is kind of how your boards would look like without all of the grid lines. And if you are concerned about your images looking blurry or looking pixelated, that is how InDesign works. It will show you the images in low qualities so that it can work faster, but you can change that if you go into view, display performance, and then press high quality display. So now you can see your images in high quality. The other benefit to use it in design to Photoshop is since you've added Photoshop files to your InDesign and not images, it means that your Photoshop files are linked. So if I right click on any of these images and go to edit original, I'm just going to add a blue color overlay just to see the massive difference. And I'm going to hit save and then go back into InDesign and see that it automatically changes. So that means that you can create your presentation boards in InDesign ahead of time and still edit them in Photoshop, but have them updated in your InDesign file. But one thing to keep in mind is if, for example, you delete any of the files, InDesign will kind of freak out and it will show you that you need to relink them. So if you change the name of the file, if you change its location, you will have to relink them. But it's easy to do if you just click on this icon and that will open the relink and you can just click on it and then relink to the original file. Or you can also relink it to a different file if, for example, you changed your mind about different perspectives and that's another way to do so.
These are the presentation boards that I curated for my thesis presentation. I'm really happy with how they turned out. And the best part about creating these horizontal boards is, for example, you can cut them and copy them into, for example, A1 posters, which we were required by the university to submit A1 posters because it had to be like with a template and it's so annoying. I hate that yellow. It doesn't go with any of my images or diagrams, but what can we do? I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you use in designing your presentation boards or do you use a different software? And good luck on your thesis presentations. I'm Rosha Shururu and I will see you next time.